So for instance, Roger Penrose uses this as an argument to say that there are certain things that mathematicians can do dealing with infinities, and by extension, our mind can do, that computers cannot do. Yeah, he, he, he talks about that there's the human mind can do certain mathematical things that the computer, as defined by the universal Turing machine, cannot. Yes. What, so that it has to do with infinity. Yes, it's one of the things. So he is basically pointing at the fact that there are things that are possible in um, the mathematical mind and in pure mathematics that are not possible in uh, machines that can be constructed in the physical universe. Mm. And because he's an honest guy, he thinks this means that uh, present physics cannot explain operations that happen in our mind. Do you think he's right on the... So let's let's leave his discussion of consciousness aside for the moment. Do you think he's right about just what he's basically referring to as, as intelligence? So, are is the human mind fundamentally more capable as a thinking machine than a universal Turing machine? No. But is, so he's suggesting that, right? So our, our mind is actually less than a Turing machine. There can be no Turing machine because it's defined uh, as having an infinite tape. And we always right. only have a finite tape. But he's Our saying it's better. can only perform finitely many operations. But yes, he thinks so. It, it can do the kind of computation the, yes. the Turing machine cannot. And that's because he thinks that our minds can do operations that have infinite resolution in some sense. And I don't think that's the case. Our minds are just able to discover these limit operators over too many parts to count. What about his idea that consciousness is more... Uh, more than a computation. So it's more than something that uh, a Turing machine can can do. So again, saying that there's something special about our mind that cannot be replicated in the machine. The issue is that I don't even know how to construct a language to s express this statement correctly. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the, the basic statement is there's a, there's a human experience that includes intelligence, that includes self-awareness, that includes the hard problem of consciousness. And the question is, can that be fully simulated in the computer, in the mathematical model of the computer as we understand it today? Roger Penrose says no. So the, the uh, universal Turing machine cannot simulate the universe. So the interesting question is, uh, and you have to ask him this, is why not? What is the specific thing that cannot be modeled? And uh, when I looked at his writings, and I haven't read all of it, but uh, when I read, for instance, um, the section that he writes in the introduction uh, to in Road to Infinity, mm -hmm. the thing that he specifically refers to is um, the way in which human minds deal with infinities. And th that itself can, I think, easily be deconstructed. A lot of uh, people feel that our experience cannot be explained in a mechanical way. And therefore, it needs to be different. And I concur, our experience is not mechanical. Our experience is simulated. It <laughs> exists only in a simulation. The only a simulation can be conscious. Physical systems cannot be conscious because they're only mechanical. Cells cannot be conscious. Neurons cannot be conscious. Brains cannot be conscious. People cannot be conscious as far as you, if you understand them as physical systems. Mm -hmm. uh, what can be conscious is the story of a system in the world where you write all these things into the story. You have experiences for the same reason that a character in a novel has experiences because it's written into the story. And now the system is acting on that story. And it's not a story that is written in a natural language. It's written into, in a perceptual language, in this multimedia language of the game engine. Mm -hmm. And in there, um, you write in what kind of experience you have and what this means for the behavior of the system, for your behavior tendencies, for your focus, for your attention, for your experience of valence, and so on. And uh, this is being used to inform the behavior of the system in the next step. And then uh, the... Uh, story updates with the reactions of the system and the changes in the world and so on. And you live inside of that model. You don't live inside of the physical reality. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just, just, just to linger on it, like it, you see, okay, yeah, it, it's in the perceptual language, the multimodal perceptual language. That's the experience. That's what consciousness is within that, within that model, within that story. 
but do you, do you have agency? It, when, when you play a video game, you can turn left and you can turn right in that story. So in that dream world, how much control do you have? Is there such a thing as you in that story? Like, is it right to say the main character? You know, everybody's NPCs and then there's the main character and you're controlling the main character. Or is that an illusion? Is there a main character that you're controlling? I'm getting to the point of like, the, the free will point. Imagine that you are building a robot that plays soccer. Yeah. And you've been to MIT computer science, you basically know how to do that. Right? And so uh, you would say the robot is an agent that solves a control problem. Mm -hmm. How to get the ball into the goal. And it needs to perceive the world and the world is disturbing him in trying to do this. Right? So he has to control many variables to make that happen and to project itself and the ball into the future and understand its position on the field relative to the ball and so on and the uh, position of its limbs or in, in the space around it and so on. So it needs to have an adequate model that abstracting reality in a useful way. And you could say that this uh, robot does have agency over what it's doing in some sense. And the model is uh, going to be a control model. And inside of that control model, you can possibly get to a point where this thing is sufficiently abstract to discover its own agency. Our current robots don't do that. They don't have a unified model of the universe. But um, there is not a reason why we shouldn't be getting there at some point in the not too distant future. And once that happens, you will notice that the uh, robot tells a story about a robot playing soccer. Mm -hmm. So the robot will experience itself playing soccer in a simulation of the world that it uses to uh, construct a model of the locations of its legs on, uh, and limbs uh, in space on the field with relationship to the ball. And it's not going to be at the level of the molecules. Uh, it will be an abstraction mm -hmm. that is exactly at the level that is most suitable for past planning of the movements of the robot. Mm -hmm. Right? It's going to be a high-level abstraction, but a very useful one that is as predictive as we can make it. And in that side of that story, there is a model of the agency of that system. So this model can accurately uh, predict that the contents of the model are going to be driving the behavior of the robot in the immediate future. But there's the hard problem of consciousness, which I would also, it, there's a subjective experience of free will as well that I'm not sure where the robot gets that, where that little leap is. Because for me right now, everything I imagine with that robot, as it gets more and more and more sophisticated, the agency comes from the programmer of the robot still, of what was programmed in. You could probably do an end-to-end -end learning system. You maybe need to give it a few priors. So you nudge the architecture in the right direction that it converges more quickly but ultimately uh, discovering the suitable hyperparameters of the architecture is also only a search process, right? And as the search process was evolution that has informed our brain architecture so we can converge in a single lifetime on useful interaction with the world and see, the formation see, the of a The problem is if we define hyperparameters broadly, so it's not just this, the, uh, the parameters that control this end-to-end -end learning system, but the entirety of the design of the robot, like the, the, there's, you have to remove the human completely from the picture. And then in order to build the robot, you have to create an entire universe. Cause you have to go, you can't just shortcut evolution. You have to go from the very beginning in order for it to have, cause I feel like there's always a human pulling the strings. Um, and that makes it seem like the robot is cheating. It's getting a shortcut to consciousness. And you are looking at the current Boston Dynamics robots. It doesn't look as if there is somebody pulling the strings. It doesn't look like cheating anymore.